Hey guys and welcome to Nick Rip. My name is Cody Lee. In today's video we have an entire army of frogs. So I've been seeing a ton of frogs all over my discord server and I had to get in on the game. So I wanted to do a tutorial and show people how I would make a little cute crochet frog. So today's video is going to be kind of a little bit different than other ones but um, I'm using my base ball amigurumi as a base for this frog. So I've already done this. I have an entire tutorial on how to do this and I'm going to have that linked down below. So come back when you have one of these balls done. It is just a simple, I'm going to post the pattern right here for the base ball, just a simple increase to 36 and then single crochet around eight times and then decrease back down to zero, uh, back down to six. There we go. So increase to 36, eight rounds round, decrease down to six and then close up. Finish your ball, call that good. I already have a very slow version of that if you need an actual like step-by-step -step tutorial for how to make a baseball, linked again down below. I will also have a printable PDF for this, which will be free for the first week. Afterwards, it'll be $3. Make sure you get that little Ravelry coupon code redeemed down below linked as well. We also have a Discord server, as I mentioned earlier. If you're interested in talking about yarn or talking about your projects or anything like that, if you need crochet help or just really want to talk to like-minded people, we have a great Discord server, which you can uh, again, everything linked down below. Everything's just going to be linked. I also made a giant plushie version and I'll explain a couple of modifications I did to the ball in order to get that. Basically, I did the same exact thing with plushie yarn, but instead of going around for eight rounds, I went around for 11 rounds and did the same 36 and decrease. Just so you know, I think he's super cute. And with plush yarn, you kind of have to make a couple modifications if you're going to be turning one pattern into a plush pattern. All right, let's go ahead and go for what you will need for this project. So for this project, you will need, as I've already said, you will need a base ball linked down below. And to make said base ball, you'll need some polyester fiber fill. Uh, honestly, you won't need more than a couple ounces. I have an entire five pound box of it, so I just always go with that. But if you buy a pound bag from wherever your craft store is, that would be more than enough to make quite a few frogs. Uh, I am also using worsted weight yarn. Today I'm using I Love This Cotton, which is a Hobby Lobby yarn. I really like this yarn a lot. Um, it's smooth and it's cotton, so it doesn't stretch the way that acrylic does. This is in Bright Citrus. I did that with all of these little frogs and I used a Joann's brand plush yarn and a Hobby Lobby brand uh, white yarn for the plush version. I am using this Bright Citrus. I have white for the belly, so if you want to go with a different color, you can do that. That one's like an off cream color, I want to say. Uh, this one is going to be uh, in the Bright Citrus, and I'm going to do a light white with that, which is just a base white. Uh, I'm also going to be using some black of the same exact yarn for embroidery, but if you just get embroidery floss, or even if you want to try to do a fabric paint for the mouth, you could do that very, very easily. I'm using some, I think these are 12s or 14 millimeter. I bought these off Amazon and I think they're stupid cute. Links will be for this, affiliate links for this down below. I bought these outright, they weren't gifted or anything like that, but I do have an affiliate program link for them. So if you're interested in supporting the channel, you can find these exact ones down below and help out the channel in the meantime. I also am using a darning needle, some scissors, and I have a D3 or 3.25 millimeter crochet hook. All right, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so we're gonna start out with the eyeballs, the most identifiable part of this little froggy. I just wanna get it done because it makes it like easier to get the other parts done when you already see the eyeballs taking shape. Um, we're going to start out with our bright citrus and we're going to do the same thing that we did for our base ball. I'm assuming that if you've gotten this far in the tutorial, you have already watched the base amigurumi ball video on how to make this cute little ball. I'm going to put this little base right there and that is one eyeball. We are creating two. So I already made my first one and I'm going to grab my bright citrus yarn and I'm going to create a slip knot. You're going to want to be comfortable with slip knotting, increasing, 
single crocheting and decreasing as well as working in the round. These are all things that I have on my Amigurumi 101 playlist if you're interested in a more slow step-by-step -step tutorial version of this. So we're going to do my version of a magic ring. If you have your own version, that is fine. So you're taking your slip knot, you're putting it onto your hook. And the way that I do my magic ring is I chain one, just like in the other video, and two. We're going to skip this second chain and go back into the first and we're going to place six single crochet inside so one two three four five and six we're going to pull that tail see how there's a giant gap there i'm going to pull it and we're going to do the same thing uh, that i always do which is take my hook and i'm going to go through the front loop only when it comes to all of this pattern you don't have to if you are in the habit of going through both your loops you're free to do that but i find that going through the front loop only looks a bit more bubbly another thing that i do to make my stitches look a bit more bubbly is i yarn under versus yarning over this is called an x stitch versus the y stitch another thing i have a tutorial for on the amigurumi 101 playlist just know that if you see that and you're kind of confused you're fine to do it however you want if you want to wrap under wrap over it will work either way i also take my tail and i work it through the stitches of my second round just to kind of pull that in and make sure that it doesn't go anywhere that way i can cut that whenever i want so again we're going to yarn under go through just the front loop with our tail up and above again you don't have to do any of these if you just want to go through the stitch as it is you're fine to do that we're going to go in again this is the same exact stitch and do an increase we're increasing every single stitch of row two i'm going to pull that tail a little bit just to make sure and we're going to be going from those six original stitches up to 12. so one two same stitch one two next stitch one two two more i believe let me double check at the end of this increase and see how many i have left i want 12 stitches at the end of this if you ever lose track you can always just go one two three four five six seven eight ten and eleven so yeah i had one more after that there's a plane that's really loud in the background so let's increase that one more time so now we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve stitches and now our goal is for round three we're going to single crochet one and increase we're trying to increase another six stitches just to get that nice width on the eye so i'm going to drop my tail that has already worked through my second row so i don't need to work that through any more stitches and i'm going to single crochet one and then increase two into the next stitch so the first stitch is just one and then it's a, an increase right there so one two one increase we're at 15 stitches now one increase 16 one increase we're almost back to the beginning again and then one increase our tails right there so that's where i know to stop it's kind of like a stitch marker just on the wrong side and i'm going to actually take my tail and pull that through so that you can use it as a stitch marker so now for rows four, five, six, and seven, four through seven, we're going to just single crochet around. So that's four rounds that we're just going to single crochet around and maintain those 18 stitches. That's what's going to get us that height. So from here, 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 and here, you're just going to single crochet around. I'll be right back as soon as I get that done. All right, so I've gone around my one, two, three, four times, and now what I like to do is I'm going to go into the first stitch of what be my fifth round around, and I'm just gonna slip stitch off. I'm gonna create a nice long tail for sewing for later. Apparently I have multiple scissors on this desk. These were not the ones that I showed you, but you know, it's neither here nor there. And what we're going to do is we're gonna take this and pull that all the way through let it kind of just be firm on its own. I like to take 
my uh, hook and go underneath the stitch that I just slip stitched under and pull my tail under this. It's not necessary, this is just what I do and I think that it makes it look a little bit more smooth. I don't know, when I'm sewing it at the very least and attaching, I'm gonna take this tail and I'm going to grab him. And what I like to do is make sure that tail's kind of smooshed back inside its little eyeball. We're gonna take our ball and I'm gonna sew this. We're gonna stuff it and we're gonna sew it. But what I like to do, and you don't have to do it this way, but this is how I do it to make sure that my eyes are even, is my left one, my right one, already has the eyeball on it. And I'm going to stuff that and I'm gonna put it right here. That way it's facing this way. So I'm gonna take this one, which is going to be my left, and I'm gonna do the same exact thing with my tail kind of facing towards the center. I like to make it so that the magic ring is just centered between them. So I start after the row after that. And I'm going to now add my eyeball onto this side of my eyeball because I like the centers being like this. It makes it a little bit more, well, centered. So I'm gonna take my eyeball and I like to add this to the second row up centered along the front. And then you can adjust this however you want afterwards. But we're going to then take our capper and cap that on. Snappy snap. And I think I need to find polyfill. Be right back. All right, so I have my fluff right here. And what I like to do is take a small bit first and kind of cup it underneath that little knob in the, the, the safety eye right there. I kind of cup it so that it goes underneath it and make sure that it's not going to kind of get crooked. If you stuff at a weird angle, it likes to kind of make the eyeball go and it just makes it look weird on the outside. So now that I've kind of centered it, I'm going to try my best at maintaining that non of the eye. We're gonna do that. I do a small stuffing first, and then as I'm sewing it on, I'll stuff more as I need to and go all the way around. I wanted to show how marking pins work. I really love them. They're super useful when it comes to, see, like that's what I'm talking about right there, how it just kind of crooked it out, technical term, made it all crooked and point out. So I'm gonna keep going underneath so it's flat, and then we're gonna go above it right there. We're gonna go like this and kind of tuck it, tuck, 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 tuck. We're going to take this eyeball and have him go right here along the six right here, the first original six that we had. Then we're gonna take this eyeball and go here. You can take something called a marking pin and stab it through. I just tried to use mine and the plastic ones are kind of super awful and uh, they don't like to go through stuffing, especially the new stuffing that I got. Well, that worked, okay. So that, I, I stiff it in right there. I stuffed it in right there. We're gonna take this one and maybe the other one will work too. Maybe if I just go a little bit closer, I don't know, but you can stab it in on the side and kind of have them keep their little place like that for when you are sewing. So I'm gonna go sew these off camera, try to make them as centered as I can, cause I think this one's a little too high up. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna do that off camera and then I will explain the little belly next cause I use that as centering. Be right back. All right, so I just went off camera and I did the eyeballs. This is actually gonna be a tutorial that I post before this on how to sew your amigurumi. So if you want to see how I sew this eyeball, you can go over to that video and see how I sew my appendages of my amigurumi. Next up, we're actually gonna do the belly real quick because that needs to be centered onto the center of uh, our little ball here. I already made our amigurumi belly. I am going to show you how I do it a little bit differently when it comes to how I attach and how I finish off. So here, our belly is only 24 single crochet around. So we did our six single crochet, went up to 12, then to 18, and then we did 24. Same exact pattern that happened with our stress ball, but instead of going to 36, we only went to 24. Now, you'll see here that I have not slip stitched off or anything. I just cut my thread. I just cut my yarn. So I'm gonna pull this, get the fur off. I'm gonna pull this through, grab my darning needle, and we're gonna do a seamless fasten off. Again, I have another tutorial of me going through this a bit more slowly, if you're interested in that, one-on-one -on -one playlist, but I am gonna show you how I do it here. Here, you'll see that I have my thread. This is our stitch that is active, kind of, just with it pulled through. We are going to go skip 
the stitch that would be the first of row five and go into the second stitch through the front and in towards the back. We're skipping this and we're essentially creating a leg of a stitch. We're creating a faux stitch right here just to make it look nice and neat. So we created one leg of our stitch, that's this right here, going over that stitch right there. So now we're gonna take our darning needle and go through the center of the stitch that we had finished off on our last round right here. We're gonna go through the center, and what I like to do is I like to go through the backs of a bunch of stitches, just cause I have them available. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna put my little darning needle through all of them and pull that through and pull it only so tight as to make this look like a stitch. So that's still a little loose. I'm gonna pull that. And if you find that you've done it too tight, you can take your darning needle and kind of go wobbly wobbly underneath it and make it kind of look like a stitch. Now I want this to look even, which is why I did this this way. I, however, am going to hot glue this onto the belly. I like how that looks better than when I sew it. So I'm going to go hot glue this on because I don't like how it all looks seamed. You can do it that way. I just don't like that for my amigurumi because if you sew it, it makes it look a little bit more like I like how it pops more when I do that. So I'm gonna go hot glue this on. I put it on the lower belly. So right here and below is where I add my belly. And then I add the mouth here and I'm gonna show you how I do the little legs next on the tutorial. I'll be right back as soon as I get that hot glued on. Oh, and you can just snip this off. It'll stay back here. And if you're hot gluing it, there's no big deal. It's just gonna literally be stuck there forever. Be right back. All right, so we are hot glued on and we are attached and I find that it makes it look a little bit more hex less hexagonal if I kind of poke down on the increased stitches. It makes it look a bit more rounded. The staggering also helps with that. It's still warm from the hot glue. It's not gonna like do anything or move, but it's still toasty. So we're gonna work on the legs next. I make these cute little tiny hammy legs. I made the first one already because they're always in duplicates because we're making a two-eyed frog with two arms and two legs. Let me know if you want to make something else because I would love to see other uh, limbs or appendages for a cute little frog like this. So we're going to make another one of these and this is super easy, couldn't be simpler. We are going to grab our yarn. We're going to create a slip knot like before. We're going to then create our magic ring, which is chaining two it's your version however you need to do it chain your two go into your magic ring which is the chain one and we're going to put six single crochet inside so one two three four five and six again pull your tail we're going to go through the front loop only and increase every single one of these stitches on round two go through the front loop Take our tail. This is important for this leg too because there's only so many stitches on this um, to then increase. I take my tail, move it forward, and work it through my stitches just like before. So one, two. We only have one increase round for this one. So then this is three, four. This is our second increase. Five. This is our third increase. Five, six. I'm counting up to the 12. So I've done six stitches in of this round seven, eight, nine, ooh, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We're gonna pull this a little bit, pull that down. And now we have 12 stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 12. And for row three, for our leg, we are just going to single crochet around. So one, all 12 stitches, just single crochet those 12 stitches again. And that's our leg, that's pretty much it. So while rows one through three is our leg, we go from six to 12 and then maintain those 12 stitches. Kinda, it wants to go out on itself. I'm gonna make it go back in on itself. And keep going until I have, I'm on 10. Oh no, I'm not. I'm on, now I'm on 10. <laughs> and then 11 and 12, 
I can tell because the tail is lined up. Now we're gonna go again, slip stitch into the first stitch of what would be the next round, pull through. And I again like to make a nice long tail for sewing. I'm gonna sew these on and next up we're going to work on the arms. So for the location for sewing on this, I like to take my tail and I like to kind of use that as stuffing on the inside. That way I can just have a nice long tail. And I also like to make little tiny, tiny amounts of fluff to go in there. We're going to then take it and line it up down along the bottom where you just started doing your decreasing along with your eye. So here, I like to make it so that it's lined up with the front. And where did my marking pen go? There it went. We're gonna take this and just kind of stab him. We're gonna take this and just kind of stab him through the side and that way you can attach them however you need to but that's where I like to add the leg I like to make it so that there's like two rows two stitches between the leg and the belly and I'm going to do that on both sides be right back when that is done all right so let's go ahead and start with the arm I have this one again already made and this is super super easy we're gonna make our slip knot just like before we're going to put that onto our hook and we're going to chain one and chain two again treating that first chain as our magic ring we're going to put five single crochet inside instead of the six like we did the other three times so one two three four five I'm going to again pull my tail, pull out a little bit more of my yarn from the skein, and we're going to turn, put our hook through the first stitches front loop, like so, kind of keep tension there, pull our tail forward, and we're going to increase every single one of these stitches just like we did before. But again, we only have five stitches this time, so we're only increasing up to ten because we're increasing every stitch basically. So one two again next stitch oh i went through both on accident three four five six next stitch is the fourth one seven eight i'm gonna tug my tail a little bit just to keep it from gathering too too much inside my stitches this is our final increase, keeping our tail in front, nine and 10. So now we want to single crochet around for two rounds. So I'm going to go through and count the first round, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, pop that out, nine, ten, and now we're on the second round. So again, one more. We're actually going to take our tail and pull that forward into that last stitch right there. We are on the second row going around. Maintaining these 10 stitches, so 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, Ooh, don't split that, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. We're now going to go into this first stitch, which would be our third time around. But instead of single crocheting, we're just going to slip stitch off. We're going to leave a nice long tail and uh, pull that through. I don't stuff these arms at all. I use these little tails as my stuffing along the bottom. So I'm going to pull that tail back out now that I'm not using it as a stitch marker. We're going to not hold on to that one. We're just going to just kind of, I'm going to use my stitch marker, kind of tamp that down again. Make sure that it's along the bottom. And now I'm going to take my darning needle and attach it along the side. So grab my darning needle right here. 
And now I'm gonna kind of overlay that in between the legs and the arms. I want there to be a row between that. So I'm just gonna go above. I'm gonna pop off camera to get this sewn on just like I've sewn on everything else. I'll be right back and show you how we embroider the cute little mouth on the front and then your little froggy is all done. Be right back. All right, so we are all but done, but I have one more thing that I like to do. I like to add on a little smile into the center or side of their face. So I have two frogs, this one and this one, that have this little side smile that I do like. I think it's super cute, but I did the big plushy one and the bright green colored, I wanna say that's what the name of that yarn is, um, in the center. So I think I'm gonna do this one in the center as well. And I have just a little bit, about 12 inches of black yarn to do this with if you have embroidery floss. Again, if you need to use fabric paint or whatever, you can do whatever works for you obviously. So I'm going to take this and what I like to do is I like to take my darning needle and I'm trying to stay as close to the sides of the the yarn on the inside as I can. I'm going to go up here in the center. That's about where I want the center. So that's where I want the bottom of my smile to be. I'm going to plop that through, keep it kind of far away enough to leave just a little bit. We're going to plop that like so. I like to leave a little bit just in case I need to fix things later. We're then going to go up and <laughs> meow. We're going to go up and over. I think that's a good width away from one another like that. I want the first line to go like that. So that's why I'm doing that that way. We're going to plop that and then tug this in a way that makes it so that, oh, that is not far enough away. How about if I bring it over here? Or is that too far? No, that's perfect. Okay, so I should have done three away. I'm going to plop that so that it's going down beneath the stitch and doesn't look like it's popping over. And then I'm going to take this and go through the center where I just came out. And again, plop it through the other way and just kind of go boop, da boop. And that is how I do my little mouth. And then I'm going to try not to mess with this, but I am going to hold this a little bit more tightly, a little taut, not tight, but taut, trying not to snip the yarn. Another nice benefit of the marking pin is I can kind of take this. You can do this with your darning needle too. I just find that this is a bit more blunt tipped is you can kind of get that to uh, hide behind your stitches a little bit more, shove that in there. And now I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And my frog is done. I am very happy with how these turned out. I think they're super duper adorable. As I do with most of my amigurumi, I just kind of geek out over the cute things that I make, as you know on my channel. Um, if you've made it this far, you probably know that about me at this point. But they're super cute. I love them. They're adorable. Look at how just... Oh, look at how cute they are. Let me know if you are interested in me turning any more of the little balls into like their stress balls, basically. If you're interested in them becoming other animals, I was thinking about maybe doing a pig. I think that could be really cute. Just a little pig head or something like that. It could just be like the top portion of a Luna and you could easily turn that into a stress ball. I think that's so adorable. Let me know if you do a plush version because holy moly, this thing's huge and adorable. And the big thing is that you just need to when you're going around and around and around, you just need to go around more to create that length because otherwise with plush yarn, it just doesn't work out. I think it's because of the hook and the tensioning and all that, but all you need to do is add more length basically to get this size body, but everything else has been done to scale. I love how he turned out. Also, these are 30 millimeter eyes that I bought off Amazon forever ago. I think I got them for my baby Yoda and I had a giant pack of them and I was asked when I uploaded my TikTok, Instagram and uh, YouTube short of me making this little guy that people were wondering how did you get such huge eyes and I'm like Amazon I'm pretty sure it was Amazon for baby Yoda a long time ago so that's pretty much it thank you for watching if you've made it this far uh, go to our discord go to our patreon if you want to support the channel discord if you really want to talk to other people that are like-minded in the yarn community we are nearing 300 people on there which is absolutely insane we have so many different boards where we just talk about all kinds of different stuff ask for help with crocheting stuff knitting stuff all that stuff um stuff 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 thanks again for watching be sure to like subscribe hit the little bell so you're in the know when i upload before you leave if you want to see more videos like this until next time guys bye